This is a video about creating a simple time series plot in Excel. I have some data that I have downloaded from USGS previously and I'm going to open that file the hide and rename it as hydrograph because the time series that I'm going to plot that I'm going to create is a hydrograph. So in this file I have my raw data that I originally downloaded. I'm not going to do anything with that. I've copied that in to a clean data tab and deleted all the metadata off the top and now I'm in a third tab called plots I'm going to create a time series plot. I'm going to insert a scatter plot and right click to select data. Add a, time, add a series and then name that series and I'm going to call it discharge which is what we're plotting. I am selecting this button to the to the right of the X values so this is a time series plot and so that means that the X axis has date. I'm going to come over here into my clean data tab select the top row and then I can select I can scroll down to select the bottom value but instead I'm going to hold down control shift down arrow to select that entire column and then hit enter. I've got now my all of the dates selected for my x-axis. Now for my y-axis I want to plot discharge. Now I can look back at my original page here to find out what my column headings mean. I want discharge which is 01 and so I'm coming to the top of this 01 column and selecting the top cell, control shift down arrow, enter, and OK. Now I have a discharge series and for now I'm just going to hit OK and this is my discharge for that year. When I look at my plot now it does not look like I expected and so I'm going to click back in to right click select data again go back in and edit that series and look at what happened here and so I have I know I started on my second row and I have 30,000 data entries but for Y I only got 4900 and so what happened is when I hit control shift down arrow it went until there was a break in the data and so there's a bunch of missing data here so it didn't get it all and so what I'm gonna do is now scroll to the top and going to delete that old data selection select the top row and then scroll all the way to the bottom I have my top row frozen in my view so that I can still see my column heading as I scroll to the bottom and now I'm gonna hold down shift and select that bottom record and now I have 30,926 uh, row is the bottom. Hit OK. OK again. And OK to get out of here. And now I have a hydrograph that looks more like I expected. This is not a very attractive graph, so we're going to do a little work to clean it up. The first thing here is that I need to have axis labels on all of my plots. So if I s once I select on the chart and go to um, layout, I can go to axis titles and name both my horizontal or my vertical axis. Horizontal is date and depending on the date format, those are typically fairly self-evident so I probably don't need to label my horizontal axis, but if I want to do that with, then I would type date in there and enter and then come to axis title vertical and I like to do the rotated style and this is discharge and then in parentheses I'm going to put my units which are CFS or cubic feet per second. Date is probably the only exception where you don't need a title on your axis because date because of the format of the date it's fairly self-explanatory typically that it's a date. Otherwise every axis on a chart needs a title and needs units like this. 
So next, this date is very hard to read, so I'm going to click on that axis, right click, format that axis, and come in here to the number, and I'm gonna tell it that it's a date, and because this is all within the, the 2014 water year, I, I might say that I don't need the date, except the date started in 2013, so I'm gonna leave the, I'm gonna leave the full date in. Let's try this one and see what that looks like. That's a lot more readable than the previous version. I'm gonna go to alignment and make it vertical so that I can get more space to read the axis and then drag this, select the plot area and shrink that down a little bit so that I can see the dates. That's getting a little bit better, but it's still not great. I'm gonna delete this date title for the axis because I don't think we need it. The other thing to get some space here, we've got a lot of white space in this chart and we wanna make, we wanna make the best use of all of this area to show our data. So I'm going to, because we only have one thing in this graph, I'm gonna delete this legend because the, the title up here uh, tells us that it's discharge. I'm gonna make this title more descriptive and say that it's uh, discharge um, actually I'm going to call it I'm going to give it this unambiguous title of 2014 water year discharge Gallatin River near Gallatin Gateway and now I'm going to click on the plot area here and resize that. I've given the chart, the, the whole chart, a descriptive title, so I got rid of the lid legend, which gave me more space. I'm gonna click on, these, on this axis label and play with the alignment just a little bit more. Um, and I'm gonna give it a custom angle of, let's see what, 45 does. Um, I might actually go to a negative 45 so that gives us just a little more space to drag this down. And I've also got this area on the ends of my graph that is wasted space at this point. And so I want my graph to start and end where my data ends, so I'm going to format that x-axis again and for minimum I'm going to set it at fixed and I'm going to say start on 10 1 of 2013 and for the maximum end on September 30th of 2014 and now my data stretches across my entire graph and I'm getting a lot closer to using all of my plot area. These now are all individual data points, and if I zoom in on this, it's a whole bunch of, of points. And so I'm going to select that series, right-click, and format the data series, and I'm going to say I don't want any markers. I want to do this with a line, and I'm going to make the line a little bit finer, and say 1.5 for that line. And now I have what's starting to look like a pretty reasonable hydrograph for that site. I'm going to give my Y axis label just a little bit more space here. I'm going to select my X axis and make those dates bold. I can increase their size a little bit. I can also play with that, the interval that it's, that it's labeled at um, by right clicking and formatting the axis again and saying that I want to label it every uh, let's let's try 60 days, something approximately two months, and it's a little it's a little bit odd because it's got the last day in some months and it's moving. So I'm gonna try I'm gonna try actually giving it 62 days, and then it's close to the first of each month, so perhaps a little bit better. I'm gonna select this x-axis label and in, or y-axis label and increase the size a little bit and make this 
these y-axis labels bold and that's starting to look uh, like a reasonable graph.